What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Elite Battle League Playoff Semifinal Weekly Roundup. That is a <laughs> wow, that is a tongue twister. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is our second to last weekly roundup. Yes, that's right. Next week will be the final weekly roundup of this season. Uh, next week we'll be covering the finals and we'll be uh, just some postseason roundup stuff uh, between hopefully Landon and I, because as you can tell, it normally be that way. Landon is not here right now. Um, I guess I should say who I am. I'm Lonely Hermit. Of course, you over on my channel. Um, normally, I'm joined by in front of Unfortunately, school has him. Unfortunately, fortunately, there's some good about it. School has him wrapped up right now. The college life for him. Um, so, unfortunately, he couldn't record with me today. Uh, so, we are going to be joined by Belly. Meryl. Hi, Belly. How you doing? Cool. Cool. All right. <laughs> that was that was weird. Uh, so we're gonna be heading into. Uh, so uh, rather, this this video right now is gonna be a little bit off the cuff. I took no notes for the matches, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think I remember the scores. I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, let's head uh, right into it. Oh, before we get into all that, of course, check out all the coaches in the description down below. Check them all out. Be sure to keep an eye out for all the matches. Uh, the finals upcoming this week is going to be over on stone family 64 channel and guanaco gaming channel so their link specifically will have the matches for the week but you should obviously also check out all the other coaches as well uh my links are down there landon's links are down there even though he's not here right now uh his links are down there as well so be sure to check out all that good stuff down below um <clears throat> and go subscribe to them and go check out their socials on their channel and all that good stuff so with that being said let's get into the first matchup here the first one that i watched i believe was the Everglade Entes versus the Miami Dragon Ice. That was the first one I watched. Um, an interesting one. So this is the second week in a row where the Entes started off with Tyranitar. And Tyranitar just kind of gets sacked off. It gets the Stealth Rocks up. It gets the Sand up. It does its job. Um, it's just sad because I love Tyranitar. To see it go down two weeks in a row it hurts my soul. Um, and this week it went down to a Weavile. To Reign of the Weavile. Who turned out to be a very great uh, asset to the Miami Dragonites and whose MVP card I haven't even made. I forgot. I need to make it right now. I'll do it after I record this. Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Um, so we're going to... Oh, sorry. Um, so Weavile kills Tyranitar. Um, and it doesn't pop up again until later in the match. But uh, you could tell that Foos had come up with an idea for uh, Cinderace. What exactly it was. I think it revolved mostly around Palkia. But you could tell that the plan didn't... It, it, it just didn't quite go according according to plan. Uh, it didn't really uh, pan out. It didn't really come to fruition. Um, Palkia went down, and from that point on, it kind of it was a little bit of a pendulum swing. It was a little back and forth for a second there. It was it was kind of in, in the Everglades court. They were they had momentum. Uh, then Palkia went down. He just kind of felt like step by step. Uh, the Dragon Knights slowly started to pick apart Everglade, the Great Wall of Everglade, as we called them before, uh, or I've called them before. Um, just picked them apart, one by one, picked them apart, picked them apart, picked them apart, and then, like I said, Weavile uh, got off to a hot start getting that kill on Tyranitar, and came in and just came up with three huge kills, uh, and was crucial, and was your semi-final MVP, uh, with four kills and one death. It, it came up huge, huge for the Dragon Knights. Um, in place of Cinderace. Cinderace was was part of the team. It, it, it technically made an appearance. It was on the team, but Cinderace never hit the field. Uh, and that, and that's I, I kudos to one echo. Kudos to you, man, for proving that you don't need Cinderace to win um, to a certain degree. Because I still think the thought of Cinderace is enough to to make opponents focus their game around them. And, and Foos kind of admitted that sort of mistake was that. Uh, he was so, I'm assuming he was so single-minded about the Cinderace, his plan revolved around that. Um, but in reality, he maybe should have switched it up and done done some different things and prep for the all-around team or a couple of different bonds. Um, so just the thought of Cinderace is enough to strike fear in your opponents and make them question their game plan uh, and force them to build a game plan around it. So he didn't use Cinderace, but to a certain degree he did. It's more about the mental than it was about it physically being in the match. It was more about the mental warfare of Cinderace because it is terrifying. Uh, so it definitely, definitely, I can tell it affected Fuse's plan. Um, you kind of have to plan around it. So I can't blame him for planning around it when, um, when it's been dominating all season. I mean, you, you kind of have to plan around it, but 
kudos for not letting it hit the field. Um, Weavile did all the work. Uh, I really hope Weavile uh, is the second or is the championship MVP. I kind of hope Cinderace isn't the championship MVP. And this is really like a bias thing. I just like, uh, I just want to see someone other than Cinderace for once. Um, and this week we got it. We got it with Weavile. Um, it was an impressive performance on both sides. But again, I feel like maybe Fuse's plan was just a little single minded towards the Cinderace. I know I've been saying you kind of have to plan around it, but at the same time, now I understand. I've seen it. I get it. Uh, what planning around one singular Pokemon does to your team, uh, does to your plan, when your plan doesn't really work out for that one Pokemon, when that one Pokemon never hits the field, um, and Fuse wasn't really able to fully adjust, and Guanaco took advantage of that. And thus, the Miami Dragonites are on to the final. The number one seed took down the number six seed, so I guess it's expected. The, the underdog went down. Unfortunately, I wanted to see that Cinderella run, uh, so sorry, Fus, but uh, Guanaco is through to the to the finals. Uh, right now, Weavile is his his uh, championship MVP, um, and I'm I've been pretty pretty impressed with the Dragonites all season. But special shout out to the Everglades. I mean, they performed incredibly well. I'll give my my little regards uh, after we're done going over the matches like I did last week, but. Kudos to you, Fus. I mean, that was the yeah. I'll, I'll talk more on it uh, in a bit, but that was that was a great match. Unfortunately, you kind of felt when the Pokey went down, the match kind of started to flip a bit, and then when Weavile came in and got three straight kills, uh, that was the that was the icing on the cake. That was that was all the momentum shift Miami needed, um, and Miami was able to walk away with that one and again in the finals. Uh, so that's that was a six four. It was a six four. Um, Scoreline, which I mean, it, the Evergardentes, I don't think they've lost by more than three. Um, they only lost by three to the Kinglers. That was the only match that they lost more than three or more than two, rather. Um, so, again, another loss that was just so close. And I feel for them, but uh, well played regardless. I mean, that was a great match to watch. Uh, so, moving on to the second semifinal matchup, the other semifinal matchup. Uh, the Chicago score bunnies versus the Atlanta Bravery an interesting matchup because this is a pretty or I guess an interesting rematch because this was a pretty recent matchup we saw um, and obviously stone was the one that ended Crobats uh, undefeated run uh, spoiler alert stone took him down again uh, I don't want it this isn't like a dig or anything but all three of stones playoff opponents with him now facing Miami in the finals he's beat all three of them and so far he's two for two so i'm very interested to see how this uh final is gonna play out uh but this matchup was interesting so the biggest talking or the biggest point i guess was that uh, freeze dry is really bad at, uh, for drizzle tapes <laughs> so stone admitted because i was reacting to it live during our sleep lock um thank you by the way to anyone who came out to that again um <laughs> stone admitted that he took inspiration from when game reviews max played uh the chicago score buddies because obviously a lowland nine tails with freeze dry tore crobats to seem apart um and again freeze dry uh between lapras and mamoswine they racked up four kills all with freeze dry um there was a little bit of a problem with that half of crobats's team was quad weak to freeze dry uh, with Seismitoad, Pelipper, and Kingdra all quad weak to freeze dry, and they all essentially got one shotted, sort of, kind of. Seismitoad definitely got one shotted uh, because Crobats, again, was not really expecting freeze dry, but then when it popped, he was like, oh, duh. Um, he quickly made the realization. I don't think he was able to adjust, though, well enough um, because once freeze dry just started to. Every time a mod went down to freeze dry, it's just like the momentum heavily shifted to Atlanta. Um, and Kyogre tried. The beginning was really interesting because Kyogre was calm minding. Um, and it tried. It took down Stone's Dialga very early, but uh, it didn't really make a ton of difference as the match went on. Um, Stone did bring back Trick Room, so that Trick Room freeze dry combo was not pretty for the score bunnies and what a game plan from stone um he he predicted this as well he said six five i don't know if he i don't think they had battled at that point so what we won't, we won't call shenanigans on that um, but six five six five was an incredibly close game but again freeze dry was was a pain in the side of the score bunnies because the drizzle teams just can't seem to handle it um what could counter i'm not 100 percent sure to be honest with you i'd have to think about that but Freeze dry again, kind of just tore score brains apart. Um, like I said, racked up four kills between Mamoswine and Lapras, who both had freeze dry. Um, and it was a, it was a, just an impressive win. Um, 
towards the end it it was like 3-1 or something like that uh no what was it it, it was on atlanta's side it was it was rayonicus and kinkelder i think that was all they had left and the score bunny side had uh Kyogre and galvantula but the rayonicus's max overgrowth was able to finish Kyogre. um and that's when i was like okay i heavily heavily doubt that galvantula can take down kinkelder more importantly i figured it would kill rayonicus which is what it did um, but I was like, there's no way that it's being a Kinkelder, and it didn't. It got one shot by Fire Punch, um, and died. So, like I said, Stone, that's, that's, uh, that's four in a row now. Very impressive. He's on a hot, hot, hot streak. The hottest streak I think we've seen all season, to be perfectly honest with you. He's won his last two, uh, regular season matchups, and now he's won his two playoff matchups. He's got four in a row. He's coming in hot into the finals. The hottest team in the league, easily. Um, I said the hottest team in the league heading into playoffs. And they're still very much the hottest team left, in my opinion. Um, four in a row. Like I said, longest streak of the season, the hottest streak of the season. Uh, Crobat's 3-0 uh, run was was great. But this was just, this is just outplaying these other teams. Close matches, but you feel by the end, like, okay, Stone's got this wrapped up. This is Atlanta's game to win. And sure enough, this was an intense match, though. It was a very intense match, 6-5, like I said. Uh, towards the end, it was a little bit of a garbage time, quote-unquote, garbage time kill. Um, that didn't really make too much of a difference on Rayuniclus uh, because again, King Keller was able to come in and finish. So, Crobats, uh, GG's because that was well adjusted, but again, kind of like Fusa's situation, couldn't quite fully adjust to the freeze dry because unfortunately that that's just not good for drizzle teams it's been proven two games now where drizzle teams just really struggled so for those of you who might be running drizzle teams next season in the ebl uh consider freeze dry <laughs> because that's a little bit of a problem clearly uh but ggs to both guys uh the atlanta braviary are going to be meeting the miami dragonites in the final but before i give you my prediction on that i want to give another uh again like i said like i did last week uh to first road dab and the everglade entes despite the record you still kept saying Saying, watch out for the Entes and sure enough we definitely had to keep watching out for the Entes because you guys performed incredibly well this whole season like I said all your losses except for like the Kinglers um, were just so close but even then even then you lost to the Kinglers in a 6-3 fashion and you flipped it turned around and just did really well to pick them apart in the next week for the playoff matchup um, so the fact that you made it to the semifinals as a six seed you took the number one seed uh, and really took it to him um very impressive i like foos you, you've really really impressed me this season with the way you've been battling um definitely one of the best in the league despite the record ignore the record it doesn't matter because you've been an excellent battle this season everyone's been saying it uh if lando was here i know he'd be saying the same thing wherever he is miss you uh <laughs> so foos an incredible season i i don't give a, a beep about about the record it does not matter you had an incredible season regardless uh and then i was very entertained by all your matches you kept all of them close and you're just a great battler and same goes to crobats uh we had high expectations of him coming into the season and it wasn't really until the end is when he started to get figured out with freeze dry teams uh you realize how good freeze dry is but regardless he was still one of the favorites um as the season kept trotting on we still we still very much a favorite unfortunately he didn't end the season in the best way he started 3-0 and he ended with a three game losing streak but regardless i mean he proved again and again that he's he's still a great battler uh and i don't know if i can say that yet never mind uh but it was an it was a, pre a pleasure absolute pleasure watching this season i'm sorry we put so much expectations on you <laughs> uh sorry we put so much expectations on you but uh you know it worked you're out so we did our job <laughs> uh but yeah so ggs to both of you guys uh fantastic seasons but now we have our eyes set on the final match of season one of the elite battle league we have miami dragon Knights versus the atlanta braviary and like i said the atlanta braviary are just hot right now they're the hottest team in the league they were heading into the semifinals. they are heading into the playoffs but the Miami Dragon Knights have proven again and again that they are a force to be reckoned with. They are definitely a team that you need to keep an eye out for. But again, the Braviary have beat them like once. They beat everyone they face in the playoffs. All three of their wins from the regular season are the three teams they face in the playoffs. So, 
right now they're two for two and they're very hot seems like stone definitely has a, a full understanding of his team now he's really starting to he really like it's not even starting to he's really mastering his team at the best possible time so uh the rigged league uh is about to happen i'm i'm gonna side with stone on this one um i i i can't count out the dragonite side so this is not gonna be an easy 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 victory at all um but this uh, the bravery are just hot right now the problem is the cinderace cinderace was wasn't really a factor the last time these two teams played each other i feel like maybe guanaco will use, will use cinderace a lot more in this matchup because it is pretty decent against stone's team uh so i think he'll better utilize cinderace this time um and we we will i can definitely say we'll see it hit the field there's no way he doesn't let center hit the field in the finals he didn't do it in the semifinals so maybe there's that chance but i i think he let center hit the field on this one um but stone's game plans have been going going well i feel like corbats was like the closest match where it could have maybe gone another way but the other ones he his his game plan went according to what he wanted um and i'm gonna back stone on this one I think the commissioner is gonna gonna uh, rig something. He's probably gonna pay Guan Echo so he could win. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think Stone walks away with the championship in this. One. But I don't see it going any any less than six four. I mean, I know I said I was done predicting scores, but I don't see it going any less than six four. No way, it's a six three, six two, six one, six zero. Oh. oh God, our first sweep of the season and it's in the finals. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Um, this is gonna be like six five. This is gonna be such a close game. Um, but again, Cinderace, do you, it's such a tough question for Stone. Do you build your whole game plan around it? Do you learn from Foos and not try to just prep around just Cinderace? Uh, I don't know, but I think Cinderace is still a very much a threat. Um, will it come in and sweep if Stone is in a position where he lost all his key mons and there's like three left that he wasn't really planning on having, like his, those three left? Uh, then yeah, I can see Cinderace coming in and just finishing. I can see Cinderace being a finisher in this matchup more so than the the main sword, um, the main attacker. I can see it being more so the finisher, the one that comes in and just sweeps everything else, like it did in the first couple games of the season. Um, I can see it being a finisher more so than anything else. But I'm gonna back Stone, hot team. I have to, I have to go. Logically, they're playing so well right now. All the game plans, like I said, are, are just on, on point four games in a row i gotta back the, the hot one right now um i still think one is the favorite i still think the dragonites are the favorite in this matchup but i, I think i think the bravery are hotter and i gotta i gotta back the hot team i got to so this was for you stone sorry when i know you're my biggest fan i know uh but i gotta back the hot team in this one i gotta come up with a logical prediction here kind of <laughs> um but yeah that's gonna be it for that the finals again will be on stone family 64 channel and one echo gaming channel be sure to go subscribe to them um if you want to see the matches uh this week and of course subscribe to everyone else in the league yeah free sword dab crobats always my videos and game reviews um and of course myself i have been lonely hermit i'm normally joined by in front of mine his links will be down there regardless uh belly is replacing him for this week uh for those you don't know i love his and and meryl and azuro uh they both i love him um <laughs> so belly any last words cool uh <laughs> that's gonna be for this one like i said though uh hopefully you guys enjoyed and i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day again let, uh next week's week roundup is the final one so be sure to tune in for that and again hope you all have a fantastic day we'll see you next week bye